This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go and look at property plants and equipment, uh, one of the first accounting standards that, that deals with your non-current assets. And here, obviously, we're, we're looking at tangible non-current assets. In later chapters, we'll go through there and look at your intangible non-current assets. But here, it's all about your tangible non-current assets. So they have physical substance uh, and are used there in the production or supply of goods. So in terms of the production of your goods, uh, that's going through there, isn't it? I'm thinking about maybe your factory, uh, the supply of goods or services. Uh, so maybe that is there and you have, is it your, your shop premises? Uh, for rental to others, uh, so maybe you have a machine uh, that you are looking to go through there and rent out to somebody else. So again, that's a tangible asset, which would be uh, property planted equipment. I think the key bit there is that you don't have to physically own it uh, to be able to go through there and recognize it as PPE. And then the key bit that you have there with regards to PPE is that you have control over the asset, uh, because if you have control, that then meets the definition of an asset doesn't it that we've seen in, in earlier chapters uh, an asset you need to have control over the economic benefits that they give you future inflows of economic benefits okay uh, likewise as well uh, it's there for admin purposes uh, so that could be there is it your your head office uh, but again don't forget that, that within your factory you know you're going to go through there aren't we and have your machinery uh, in terms of what goes through and happens in your shop uh, you're going to have there aren't you is it your your fixtures and fittings so the shop shelves uh, the, the tills uh, and then in the head office you know you're going through there as well um, beginning to look as well aren't we uh, let's say your computers okay uh, there we go. No. You know the categories, don't we? We tend to have land and buildings, uh, plant and machinery, motor vehicles, fixtures and fittings. They tend to be the, the main categories. But the key bit as well is don't forget that PPE also covers assets under construction. OK, so if you are constructing an asset to be property, plant and equipment, you still follow the rules of IS 16. OK. Uh, likewise, in order for it to be property, plant and equipment, it's going to be non-current, isn't it? So we're looking at using it for, for more than one period, aren't we? OK. Uh, so what we need to go through and look at is we need to look at how it is initially recognised. So what do you record at the start of the asset's life? How do we go through and then depreciate it? And then how do we go through there essentially and revalue it? You'll find a lot of it is a revision from what you have previously seen at your certificate level. Uh, so let's just go through and first of all begin to look at is it your initial recognition, okay? Uh, so when you go through there and look at your initial recognition, I think a lot of it's common sense. Uh, you capitalize it based upon your purchase price, so what you've paid. Uh, just note that includes any irrecoverable taxes. So you're going through there uh, and one that you might have, I suppose, in the UK, we pay a tax on the purchase of land and buildings. So you have the stamp duty, uh, but also be aware that maybe if you buy a motor car, uh, if you buy that motor car, then you cannot reclaim back sales tax. So that sales tax on the motor car is irrecoverable. OK, so you capitalize it as part of the cost of the asset. Note, you then capitalise it net of any trade discounts. So be careful there that you use the word trade discounts or spot the word trade discounts. Remember, a trade discount is a discount given to you at the point of sale, Okay, meaning you automatically pay less than the list price today. Uh, you ignore any cash or any settlement or prompt payment discounts. Okay, And then the key one, I think, where the examinability comes in, isn't it? is all about those directly attributable costs. So those essentially unavoidable costs based upon getting the asset to its location and condition 
for it to be capable of operating in the manner intended. Okay. I haven't thrown in a big, long, exhaustive list. I think you can use your knowledge and apply it as you go through the questions. Uh, common ones to learn there, you've got site preparation. So maybe if you need to go through there and level uh, the, the, the land before you build your head office or level the factory floor before you put in place your machinery so it's nice and sturdy. Then site preparation fees can be capitalised. Delivery and handling costs. So if you're getting your goods from the other side of the world, the shipping costs can be capitalised because without getting the goods to their location, uh, you would not be able to use it in the manner intended. Uh, installation and assembly. Uh, so you've got your nice flat floor. You have brought your goods from overseas. You need to fix it to the floor. So installation and assembly costs. Once it's ready, testing costs to make sure that it works in the manner intended. And then any professional fees. Uh, so if you've bought land and buildings and you have incurred stamp duty, Maybe you've got accountancy fees involved. Uh, maybe you've got solicitors involved. Uh, so any professional fees are directly attributable. OK, uh, just a small little note. Maybe go just a little bit too far. I don't know. We'll see. But it's best to throw it in, isn't it? In case it does crop up. Uh, you could have costs of dismantling and removing the item. The common one that you tend to see is an oil well or an oil rig. Uh, you've built an oil rig in the, in the sea or in the ocean somewhere and then in 50 years time you need to dismantle it. Well, you are obliged to dismantle it, maybe legally, and therefore you are going to go through there and capitalise that cost today, even though you know you're not going to incur it until 50 years time. However, the key issue there is what you have to do is you capitalise it at its present value. So if I have to pay 10 million in 50 years time, maybe that 10 million is only, say, half a million in today's terms. OK, don't worry about what happens to the credit entry for now. Just concern yourselves with the debit entry. Yeah, the key bit there is if you have any future dismantling or removing costs that you capitalise them as part of the cost of the asset at their present value. Don't worry about the present value in terms of its calculation. You will be given that within the exam. OK, uh, I think as well as looking at what we include, it's also good to look at what is not included, isn't it? OK, uh, so costs that are incidental to the construction. So any errors, maybe you've submitted some information to the construction company. And they've gone through and carried out your instructions, but then they've realised that what has been submitted was wrong. Any additional cost because of the error uh, can, cannot be capitalised. OK, uh, startup costs. So maybe some some marketing uh, once the asset is being used. Uh, those startup costs ca cannot be capitalised. OK, marketing is just essentially you know, uh, an additional expense, isn't it, in the business? Uh, the asset is already up and running generating you benefits you're just trying to get extra benefits uh, general overheads uh, you're not allowed to capitalize general overheads but specific overheads uh, in terms of the construction of the asset you could so general overheads uh, maybe some rent some rates things like that uh, that they cannot be capitalized okay and also as well whilst your asset is getting up and running uh, you may be testing it it works but then once it is working, you may be using it and, and incurring losses. Uh, it, the, the product is not as successful as what you first thought. Those initial losses cannot be capitalised. In the past, in the old days before IS-16 took precedence, uh, people did try to capitalise them. A bit naughty. Okay, If you're making losses, we expense those losses, don't we? Thinking about prudence. Okay, uh, If we go through them and just have a look, is it over the page? Uh, we've got just a, a little bit, is it there, uh, at the bottom of the page, is it there, uh, just a little bit of an example. Uh, so it says there, calculate the initial cost of the machine uh, to be recorded in accordance with IS-16 property, plant and equipment. So you're looking at your purchase price, plus any irrecoverable taxes, net of any trade discounts, plus any directly attributable costs of getting the asset into its location, its condition, ready to be used by management as intended okay don't remember all of that just look at the costs 
think about is it directly attributable and then whether or not it's capitalised. So uh, what have we got? Uh, it says here, Jones purchases, well, start again. Jones purchases a machine that had a list price of $100,000. So that's the price in the catalogue. Uh, but was offered a trade discount. Is it there of 10%? So immediately when I go to the till, they knock 10% off. That's good negotiating skills, isn't it? Well done. So if that's the case, if we knock 10% off, and we're going to capitalize, is it the 90,000? Okay, just be careful. It says a further settlement discount of 5% is available if made within 15 days. Well, that means I may pay 5% less than the 90,000 if I pay after, say, 10 days. But that doesn't mean to say that we go through there and adjust the cost. Yeah, we, we've dealt with that in the certificate level, haven't we? Uh, if you're paying your supplier quicker, that's a discount received, isn't it? Okay. That's in the past. You passed your certificate level. You've moved on. Okay, you thought certificate level was hard, didn't you? And now you're here. It's even harder. Uh, but there we go. Uh, also says Jones incurred the following charges in getting the asset ready for its intended use. Uh, shipping and handling charges. Yes or no? Correct. Yes. We're going to go through that and capitalise those. Uh, because if not, you know the asset isn't in its location and condition. Uh, Pre-production testing. Uh, could we count or could we capitalize those testing costs? Yes, because we wouldn't then know if the asset actually works. Okay, so we can capitalize those. Uh, site preparation costs. Oh, you, you're there already. Excellent. Yeah, you, you've capitalized to 17. Uh, general overheads. Brilliant. Well done. No. Okay, so we're not going to go through there and, and capitalize those, are we? Okay. Just be careful, it does say included in the site preparation cost is $3,000, which is as a result of Jones providing incorrect requirements for the assets. So what you have there is that that 3000 comes about because of an error in providing some of the information. So if that's the case, what we're going to do is when it comes to looking at the capitalising, we thought we were going to capitalise the 17. What we actually go through and do there is we only capitalise the 14, don't we? The error gets expense through profit or loss. Everybody happy with those? Hope so. So we capitalise the 90. We capitalise the 3,500. We capitalise the 12. We capitalise, is it the 14? If we go through there and have a look at the total of everything that I have gone through and circled in black, does it give me 119,500? Okay, that's what we capitalise. And once we've capitalised it, we will then go on to depreciate it. Okay, there we go. Uh, a question like that, I think, would be a prime example, wouldn't it, for, for an objective test question within the exam, looking at what we capitalise. Do be careful, you know, we could turn that around, couldn't we? And instead of saying what we capitalise, which is maybe a certificate style question, we could look at what we do not capitalise, okay? So that would be the four and a half thousand and the three thousand, giving me seven. So just have a think about that. You never know what's going to go through and, and appear within the exam, do we? Uh, if we go through there and look at your subsequent expenditure, so you've gone through, you've capitalised the asset at some point in the future. Maybe you spend more upon it. Uh, key bit that you've got there is that you can only capitalise that expenditure if it improves the asset. Because what you're saying there is that you have an increase, isn't it, in your economic benefit. So an extension to your factory, an extension to your warehouse and extension to your property will give you additional benefits isn't it if you do something to your machine that means it produces a better quality of goods maybe it produces more goods in the same amount of time that is increasing the economic benefits okay anything else should be written off so essentially things that get written off are any 
repairs, any maintenance, because that just gets the asset, doesn't it, to its previous operating capacity. Okay. Uh, only if it enhances the benefits do we capitalize it. Okay. Uh, hidden within that is just thinking about, about two aspects, essentially. Uh, looking, is it at your separate components? And then also your inspection and is it overhaul costs? Okay. Uh, so separate components, sometimes referred to as complex assets. Imagine you've got a ship. Imagine you've got an aeroplane. You know, there's lots of different components that go into the that asset, isn't it? If you think about your aeroplane, you've got the, the body of the aeroplane. You've got the engines. Uh, you've got the, the internal aspect or the, the seats, uh, the kitchens, the toilets. And all those are, are, are going to last for different periods of time. They have different useful lives, don't they? You know, the, the interior of the plane is going to last a lot less than, than the outside of the plane and the engines, or at least you'd hope so anyway. Okay, So maybe the interior of the plane will depreciate it over a shorter period of time. Uh, the outside of the, the, the aeroplane will be depreciated over a longer period of time because it will be expected to, to last for longer. So all that you go through and do is you take all the separate components and then each one is depreciated over their own individual life. Okay, so you have your total cost and then you separate out the cost to the, each individual component and then depreciate that cost separately. Okay, uh, the other one is going through there and looking at your inspection and overhaul costs. Uh, normally, your inspection, your overhaul costs are, are part of what, what's required, isn't it, on your ship? part of what's required on your aeroplane. Maybe every three years, every five years, the aeroplane needs to have a thorough inspection. And the key thing is that it's not repairs, it's not maintenance. It's essential, isn't it, for you to be able to continue to use the asset as is necessary. So what we do is those inspection and overhaul costs, normally they would be expensed. But under IS-16, uh, in terms of thinking about your separate components, we will go through there and capitalize the inspection and overhaul costs separately. Okay. And depreciate that over their useful lives. Okay. Uh, so now that's the actual inspection and the overhaul costs. Anything that needs repaired or maintenance maintaining would just be expensed. And the key bit there is thinking about the inspection cost. Uh, the cost of, I don't know, maybe getting your ship into the dry dock. Uh, the, the cost uh, of, of the plane being lifted up into the air and put into, say, a testing rig uh, to see that it is still functional. Uh, that is the cost that you will capitalise separately and then depreciate. And then after every inspection, if there's any cost that's left, you would then remove it and then capitalise the new cost. OK, just a really tiny little picky bit. But other than that, I wouldn't worry. Make sure you're happy with the initial cost. And then you should be okay with everything else.